This is Max Williams with United Real Estate, and today we're in North Chesterfield. Today we're going to take a look at a five-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath home. This beautiful home is located on a gorgeous one-and-a-half-acre lot. We've got mature trees, really nice, quiet neighborhood. This home sets back, obviously, from the street. There's not a whole lot of traffic that goes through, and good buffers between the lots. This home is newly renovated, built in 1994, and we're coming in at just over 3,850 square feet. So we've got quite a bit of space here in this beauty. I'm excited to bring this to you. Uh, it really shows well, and I hope that you will enjoy it. One of the best things about being in our current situation here with COVID-19 is that we have a bunch of technology that we can use to communicate, to entertain ourselves and just kind of pass the time a little bit easier than we could 10, 15, 20 years ago. Just this past weekend, there was a battle, a battle between two R&B superstars. And uh, during this time, a lot of entertainers have figured out that since they've got a captive audience, that this is a great time to do free concerts, to do things that otherwise they probably wouldn't do just because everyone wants to pass the time and there's nothing better to do in many cases. So these two entertainers, uh, one of them, his name was Babyface. Um, his mama called him Kenny Edmonds and the other, his name, Teddy Riley. His mom calls him Teddy. Uh, they were very, very popular in the eighties and they decided to go on together uh, play their hits, and fans, of course, could enjoy and then decide who they like best. When they did the split screen, you could see the background for both of them. Uh, Babyface had a laptop and a microphone. Teddy Riley had a band. He had a backup dancer. He had a hype man. He had a DJ. There was a security guard. I even heard an infant they're crying in the background. Phones were going off, and after they started, they realized quickly that the sound wasn't quite right. This was after uh, two or three songs. It sounded like a cheap $5 AM radio. Sound quality was awful. So they worked on it. Uh, the, the camera was still rolling during this whole time. He's standing there kind of looking back and forth saying, well, what do I do? Uh, uh, it was just chaos. It was a real painful Thing to watch. Uh, Babyface was sitting there patient. You, you could see the, the kind of smirk on his face. He was uh, very pleasant about it, but you could tell he was getting kind of perturbed. And at one point he said, hey, uh, if we don't get this uh, taken care of soon, I, it's my bedtime. So it was uh, definitely a painful thing to watch. They rescheduled. It never happened that day. They rescheduled the next day and it went off beautifully. And so you may be saying, Max, what does that have to do with real estate? Well, anytime something happens in my life that I observe, I try to get a takeaway or two from it. And there were a couple takeaways that I got from this particular situation. Number one takeaway was always know who's on your team and what their capabilities are. Uh, Teddy Riley had a bunch of people there, probably very talented to many respects, but clearly they couldn't do the basics, which was basically provide sound reinforcement that was needed for this event. Uh, number two takeaway was presentation is everything. Uh, no matter how great your product, or your service, your house is, if it's not presented properly, then what's the point? And so I wanted to expand on both of those concepts a little bit. Number one, with your team. Whenever you buy or sell real estate, there's going to be a team involved. That team, uh, from the purchase standpoint, is going to include your realtor, your loan officer, the title company that actually does the closing. You've got a home inspector. You have a person that actually does the termite inspection. Uh, there are just many people, uh, underwriters that work for the bank. Uh, and there are even some that I'm not even mentioning that are gonna be crucial in getting your transaction closed. That's your team. 
And to a great extent, you have the ability to choose who is on your team. Karen, that works down the hall in accounting and got her real estate license uh, three years ago, she sold a total of five homes in her career. She's not a subject matter expert. She may be a great person. She may be kind. She may be a really fun person, but she's not a subject matter expert. She has not done it enough to be a subject matter expert. There are some things in life that you only become an expert at by doing them. That's important tip number one. Important tip number two is select your team purposefully. Uh, I mentioned this in an extensive uh, manner in a previous video. You just don't pick a loan officer because they work for the bank that you happen to bank at. You pick your loan officer because they have expertise, experience, and recommendations that illustrate that they are the best at what they do. So you gotta be very deliberate in that respect. Now, talking about presentation, this seller, this renovator, this rehabber gets it. You see this presentation here. This home is staged, no one lives here, but they do enough staging in this home that makes it come alive. They spend money for this, and it's money well spent because I always get the comments when I cover one of these homes is that the staging is so nice. Uh, this is going to be a secondary room here. This is a kind of like a storage area. I imagine if you wanted to make a huge pantry, you could. Uh, it could go a couple different ways. Uh, so that is key. I can't tell you how many times I look in our MLS, and you have seen them too. If you look at any of the ads that are on uh, Realtor.com, Trulia, Zillow, the photographs that you see for real estate are all over the board as far as the quality. Real estate videos are number one, only ahead of real estate photography as far as impression. The pictures that you see either help someone make up their mind to schedule a viewing or they make them say, huh, this house doesn't really look that good. Let's go on to the next. I'm going to point out the staircase here. You're going to see that again when we go upstairs, but I wanted to orient you to exactly where it was here on the end of the house next to the garage and the kitchen. So that is extremely important. You can tell the agents that just chose to whip out their cell phone and take pictures of a house. It just, it just isn't the right way to do it. So if I were listing a house, one of the questions that I would ask is, how do you choose to present my home visually to the public? Because that's the only thing they have to go off of other than whatever descriptor or price that you have in the listing. So very, very crucial. Two points uh, that I wanted to, to share with you. And uh, so let's go on up and take a look here at the second level. You guys can see the amount of work they put in here. Uh, this home is absolutely stunning. That first floor was mainly wood floors. We've got brand new carpet here on the second level. That's gonna be our master there to the left. We're gonna finish up there. We're gonna go down the hall and then come back down. We're gonna start in our bonus room. Our bonus room is typically, there's our staircase there that I mentioned that we could see earlier from the kitchen area, from the kitchen next to the garage. So that's where you would come up if you use that second staircase. So here in the bonus room, this is a really nice size bonus room. I love it because we look at all these windows that we have. We've got a window on the front, two on the side, and then we have one back there on the rear. It's just very bright and open space here on the second level. We also have a walk-in closet, which is nice. This could really be like a second master. Once again, multi-generational family situation. This would be great because then you'd have two uh, masters and that would be on either side of the home. I didn't mention this outside, but our playhouse, on the second level, there's a huge bay window, massive decking on that playhouse. Some child is gonna be spoiled if a child ends up living here. Uh, that was just an amazing playhouse that they'd have there at their disposal. To the left is going to be our hall bath. I love this marble look that they put in this, uh, these bathrooms, just a really, nice classy look once again we've got the gray and white colors 
in here that uh, is just very popular during this time. We do have a closet that is back here behind the door, conveniently located. Look at that marble, just a really nice look. Okay, directly across the hall is going to be, we're gonna call this bedroom number two. This is probably one of the more conservative bedrooms up here on the second floor, but still plenty enough space. You could do a full size bed in here with no problem. Nice size closet. This home does have a whole house fan. And if you have not experienced this, this is a really neat feature. I don't think they're really doing them anymore in homes, but that big fan right up there, let's see right there, that you hit a, a switch and it just creates a nice vacuum. That huge fan will pull air through the entire house. Uh, and it's very good because the vacuum that it creates will allow you to create a breeze and you don't have to necessarily turn on the AC uh, if it's not that hot. So just nice breeze, put up the, the windows and just enjoy uh, that nice airflow. Okay, that's gonna be bedroom number three. Directly across the hall is gonna be number four. We're now on the front of the house. Uh, this one is kind of neat because they put a little bench there in the corner. Obviously, if you didn't need that bench, you could uh, take that out. Double doors here to the closet. The other thing with presentation is how is an agent, a listing agent, if you were selling, how are they going to present your home to the most people possible? Uh, because that is one of the keys to selling it, giving it market exposure. Uh, after I post this video, within a couple days, over 2000 people will see it. And you don't have to trust me on that. You can look at the actual view count that YouTube will share with you and you'll see. So that is key in getting homes sold, market exposure. Uh, I am somewhat biased, but no one in town will give you more exposure via social media than Max Williams. Okay, beautiful, large master, and there's more. We go up here, there's an additional 400 plus square feet here on this level that is above the master. So this could be a great space if you wanted to make it home office, if you wanted to make it a cave, you could do that nice and convenient. If you got tired, you could just go down a few steps and boom, you're in bed. So really unique floor plan here of the way this is set up. Our knee wall is good because it does give us a good amount of usable space up here on this attic level. Storage is always an important consideration in any home. And now we have some unfinished storage space. Some additional boards could go there to give you some additional flooring space here in this unfinished attic. Also up here, this is the whole house fan that I mentioned. That's the fan that we kick on and then create that suction and uh, just help move a bunch of air through this beautiful home. Okay, that's gonna do it for this big boy. If you have any questions about this or any other home in the market, my name is Max Williams. It'd be an honor for me to help. Oh, wait a minute. I was a little premature because I forgot to show you guys the master bath. Here to the right is going to be one of our dual closets. And we've got one directly on the other side that is about the same size. And here we go into this grand master bath. There you go, jetted tub. You guys know I, I've talked to you several times about the jets and how invigorating they are. You got tired, muckle, tired muscles and just want to Enjoy a nice relaxing bath. You throw a bomb in there and uh, just relax and enjoy the aromatherapy that fizz from the bomb and help moisturize that dry skin. On this other side is another vanity that is the same mirror style of the other side and our sliding 
glass door here. Looks good. I love that beautiful marble look. And there's an interesting feature here. Uh, directly across from the shower, we have a mirror. And they've done studies. And what they found was whenever you have a mirror uh, that's directly across from the shower, if someone does that, they get out, they look at the mirror, it does one of two things. Uh, either it helps them uh, with their weight loss because they see what's coming out of that shower and they say, oh, we've got to do better than this, or it discourages shower use. And so neither one of those actually are bad things. And I'll tell you why. Right now, we've got a lot of social distancing going on. So if you decided to cut back on your showers, it really wouldn't be that big of a deal while we are social distancing. But that's completely your call. Max Williams, 804-402-7788. Reach on Facebook. Under Richmond Area Foreclosures on YouTube, under my name, Max Williams Realtor. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks so much for taking the tour. Have a great day.